<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm LJ from Purico and today we're doing a little tutorial on painting fabric. So um, basically for painting fabric, I guess it's more using your paint as a dye for the fabric. That's kind of how my head works it out. Hello baby girl. My little daughter's here. You want to sit up here? It's my little Matilda. We're on lockdown, so she's not at school. She's here with me today or every day. It's awesome. No, I can see you. <laughs> um, so my go-to uh, products for painting fabric is chalk paint. So I'm using obviously Purico chalk finish today. Um, I use fabric softener and water and a spray mister. So we'll get started. I will show you what I've done so far. So the backing here of the chair is what it, like the before I guess. So you can see that it's got some marks on it. It's like a pale pink sort of color. Get down. No. Get down. No. Get down. Can I sit up here while you're painting it? You can sit up there while I'm painting it. Can I help you? Okay, so this um, section ah. here no, no, has been painted uh, three coats and it's also been waxed. So this um, section here is complete. It is still Let me help pliable. You. you can see I'm oh, hey, wait, someone said digging I my you. hand. Oh, really? Is my volume not up? Okay, let's have a look. See, maybe I should put oh, no, I can hear the lapel mat. Hey, can everyone hear? Can everyone hear me? <laughs> Sharon said she can't hear me. Okay, so she is on Facebook. So can you hear me on Facebook? Someone said I can hear you. Oops. Oh, come on down, darling. <laughs> Okay, so this one section has um, already been completed. And I've got two coats on here. And this seat has three coats. So what I'll do is I'll start from the beginning and I'll show you each um, layer that I do and how I do it. So to start off with, hopefully that's in the shot well enough. I spray with water. I don't saturate it, I just sort of dampen it slightly. So. Okay. And so I've got my chalk paint here, probably maybe 100 mil there. And what I do is I put some fabric softener in it. So that helps um, keep the suppleness of the fabric. And I usually, I do it all by eye. I don't measure, sorry. But I usually do about half as much as the paint that I've got there. So that's probably enough. And then I do double what I've got in here of water. So that's my mixture that I do. So I guess 100 mils paint, 50 mil of fabric softener, and then about 150 mil of water. And I just give that a good shake. So what you're left with is like a really sort of runny mixture, okay? And then I just start painting. So basically, it's you just pop, pop it on, get painting. Make sure you get into the um, grooves and, um, you know, especially if you've got fabric that's got buttons, you've got to really get into those um, creases where the buttons go in with the diamond back sort of chairs. 
and it doesn't matter if you're putting put a heavy or light coat on because your mixture is um you know watered down so i never sort of I just get it on there basically. Getting all the creases there. And you can use any type of paintbrush. You don't have to um, use any sort of special paintbrush or anything. So can everyone hear me? Is it going? Working? Okay, so after you've um, painted a section, see that you can see the coverage that it's got. So basically, once I've painted, I leave that overnight to dry. So it's, you know, it's kind of a quick process of the actual painting of the fabric, but it's a long process because of the drying, drying times. It's pretty messy because your paint is quite runny, but I think that's kind of the fun part of painting, really. So normally, depending on the um, colors I'm using and the color that I'm covering, I would do three to four coats and you're much better off doing um, lots of lighter coats than um, you know one or two heavy coats because your paint um, will just dry really hard and crack if you're doing the paint sort of too heavy without the liquid to Sort of soften it and um, dilute it a little bit so your paint's kind of acting like a dye uh, someone's asked if you sand between the coats i do i'll show you that in a sec once i've just finished this little bit i'll show you how i do it so you can see it's it's really absorbing all that paint really quickly And these are, they're like that, I don't even know really what, it's kind of like a flannelette sort of fabric. It's quite nice and soft. It's not quite velvety, but it's got that feel. Okay, so that's my one coat that I leave to dry overnight. So I'll move onto this section. So this section here, has dried overnight this has got one coat and that's it so one coat of the paint mixture so i usually use a 120 grit sandpaper and all i do is just sand straight over the fabric and when you do this if you feel before and then feel after you've sanded, you can really feel the difference. It just softens it all up again. And then I just get a cloth and I wipe all the, dust, the sand dust off it. And then you just proceed to do another coat. So I do spray it again in between coats. You want to remind people who've just joined what your mixture is? Oh, okay. So those of you who didn't see in the beginning, I have um, 100 mils of Purico chalk finish in the colour Calico. Then I added 50 mils of fabric softener and 150 mils of water and then just gave it a good shake and this will keep like if you keep a lid on it it'll keep for a couple of days not too long um because of the fabric softness sort of then goes in and kind of makes the uh paint like a big 
goopy, <laughs> slimy, <Yeah. laughs> slimy mess. <laughs> There we go. So that's how the second coat. Right. So the seat here, let's pull that forward. That's actually um, completed. That is ready for a sand and then for the final waxing. Move all this away. So again, I just take my 120 grit sandpaper. See, you do get a fair bit of dust. Whoop. Okay, and then once you've done that, I just go on to waxing. I use a wax brush and um, get the lid off that. And I'm just using our uh, white liquid wax today. So I've got some in a tub here. So the liquid wax is basically just a liquid form of our beeswax polish that we make. It's available in 500 and 125 mil sizes. And it's, it's really nice and soft and easy to use. Someone's asked, did you clean the chair with anything first? Before yeah, you I did. I did. I actually um, used our lemon myrtle cleaner and cleaned, yeah, cleaned all the grot off it and then rinsed it and then let it dry overnight. So I think the longest thing about doing um, furniture is just the drying times in between because you want it to really dry between coats, otherwise you, you're just going to get it wetter and wetter and wetter and that's when you risk getting mould on it. So the reason I chose to do white wax is because I didn't want it to look flat. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it. So the white wax, the... Um, the tint in the wax will sort of grab on in different areas and um, give it some variation. And then once I've finished um, waxing it and I let the wax sit for a while, I'll then just do a bit of a buff with it as well. And you can either do that with a brush or um, a cloth. Just buff off the excess like you would on your furniture. So it's pretty easy painting fabric. It's um, a nice way of updating grotty fabric. So the best fabrics to do are those that haven't um, got too much texture. If you have that like um, textured fabric that's got huge weaves and that sort of thing, it takes, it's a little bit harder to keep it um, supple because the fabric's kind of bulky. But also you can paint your leather chairs, your vinyl chairs, and you don't actually, with um, leather or vinyl, you don't actually have to water down the paint. But I would still use your chalk paint and wax it. Like, it's like it's a piece of furniture really, but the um, paint and waxes go beautifully over leather and vinyl. Okay, I've got a... Um, Sharon asks, how long did you leave the wax on? Um, I usually leave it on oh, a couple of hours really, let it sort of sink in 
and keep that fabric soft. I've lost a few hairs. Um, but yeah, I just leave this sit for a couple of hours and then I would just get either um, obviously a clean cloth and buff it. You're kind of not bringing up a sheen, you're just pulling off the excess that's on there. Um, and you can keep just using your brush to push it into the fabric. And this will help um, make it somewhat waterproof as well because you've got that waxy coating over the top. And that's kind of it really. It's a really simple process, just kind of takes a little while with the drying times. So you basically, I hit it there with the wax. Um, yeah, basically that's it. So you start off with um, a clean piece. You then spray it with water. You apply your mixture of um, I did 100 mils of chalk finish, 50 mils of fabric softener, and then 150 mils of water. So you apply that with a brush after spraying your piece. Let them dry overnight, and then give them a wax with a 120 grit sandpaper. Um, wipe off the dust after you've sanded it, and then apply your next coat, and just keep repeating that until you've got as much um, coverage as you need and then wax it that's it and then once you've left the wax for a little bit to soak in to that fabric to keep it soft um, then you buff it off so that's it quite easy anyone else got any more questions can't see we'll make sure to put the formula on the Right down yeah Sharon I'll pop the formula in the comments so that everyone knows um, it's completely up to you like how much fabric softener you add if you add too much I find that the smell of the fabric softener is just too much it gets into the fabric um, I guess it also depends on what um, smell your fabric softener is but it's I like adding the fabric softener it does give that little bit of a fresh scent if you've got like a really old piece um, but it really does help keep the um, fabric soft so hopefully that's helped if anyone's thinking of um, painting any fabrics it's pretty easy it's just long-winded because of the drying so hopefully I've helped people out today and I'll see you next Wednesday at 11 o'clock we have some little bedsides and I think I might be doing some decoupage. So I'll see you next week and hopefully everyone's having a good lockdown. <laughs> okay, see you later. Thank you so much.